Hi, I am Dr. Reynaldo Ojoson, Director of R. Ojoson Pep Talk. I have a patient empowerment program which I like to empower the lay people or patients to take control in the management of their health. What I have in mind in my pep talk, which may run for three years, is to empower at least 30 persons with my family members and my patients as a priority. This is my key performance indicator. I hope you will be in my group of 30. I launched this pep talk on May 15, 2021 with module on COVID-19. Second module was on patient empowerment. Third module, patient management process. Fourth module, rights in patient empowerment. Fifth module, staying healthy and contented with five parts. Introduction and intentional living plan, healthy lifestyle plan, screening and periodic health check, early diagnosis and early treatment, and first aid and basic medical care. My pep talk today is entitled Staying Healthy and Contented, Early Diagnosis and Early Treatment. My empowerment objective is for lay people to have an understanding of the use of early diagnosis and early, and early treatment as a strategy in staying healthy and contented. This pep, pep talk is being conducted with the assumption that you have attended the RO Hoson pep talk on screening and periodic health check. One tactic to stay healthy or alive as long as possible is to have an early diagnosis and early treatment for a discovered disease. Early diagnosis can be promoted by periodic health check or symptom-based early health check. To repeat what or to review what I mentioned in our OHOS and PEP talk on screening and periodic health check, the screening and periodic health check is used for people who are asymptomatic apparently healthy who are screened for early detection of diseases so that they can be treated early enough to avoid disability and death. Should I have a periodic health check or periodic health exam? The answer is yes and no. After removing the legal, such as newborn screening, occupational, travel, and organizational requirements. Yes, if you and your trusted physician have assessed that you, generally healthy, have a higher risk for developing a particular disease because of a strong family history and because you are in, our, in, our, in an age group that has a high incidence for a particular disease. If you should undergo screening, screen only for the identified disease at risk. No, if you or, and your trusted physician have assessed that you, generally healthy, do not have a higher risk for developing a particular disease as compared to the general population in your age group. Other reasons for no answers. Studies have shown that general or routine health check have not reduced morbidity or mortality, neither overall nor for cardiovascular or cancer causes. Practical recommendation is to be selective using risk-based risk approach. Just like in curative medicine, the biggest pitfall in disease prevention, which screening is a strategy, is that things that ought to work for uh, do not always do so. Even the strategy of screening has its failures. The presence of false positive results in screening tests has uh, many asymptomatic patients wrongly labeled as being ill. Instead of improving the quality of life of people, this phenomenon of false labeling has been found to wreak havoc on the social, psychological, physical, and financial st stability of unfortunate individuals. Furthermore, False positive tests often lead to a battery of expensive and unnecessary follow-up procedures. The presence of false negatives can give a false assurance that everything is okay, which may lead people to ignore or minimize new symptoms. A lot of times, ounce of prevent prevention translate to just an ounce of cure. If you don't go for periodic health check, 
on periodic health examinations, make sure to listen to and watch your body closely for symptoms of a particular disease. Once symptoms of a particular disease occur, consult a physician right away. With this strategy, strategy you still have an opportunity to catch the disease early. So the other way of promoting health early diagnosis aside from periodic health check is symptom-based early health check. Symptom-based early health, health check means that at the onset of symptom, a patient consults a physician right away for early diagnosis so that the discovered disease can be treated early enough to avoid disability and death. As mentioned, symptom-based early health, health check also carries an opportunity to catch the disease early. Which one is better, periodic health check while there is still no symptom or early health check at the onset of symptom? Which is better, better in terms of early diagnosis? If there is a difference, does the advantage of earlier diagnosis of one approach translate to better outcome in terms of reduced morbidity and mortality? Theoretically speaking, screening at the stage of no manifestation of symptoms yet in persons with an actual disease that is being done in periodic health check has, the, has an advantage of earlier detection of, this, of the disease compared to symptom-based early health check where there is already symptoms. The question is, does the advantage of earlier detection of periodic health check translate to better outcome in terms of reduced morbidity and mortality? There are no robust or randomized controlled studies comparing the two approaches. However, there are studies that show periodic health checks had not reduced morbidity or mortality, either overall or for cardiovascular or cancer causes. It may be that as long as the detected diseases, assuming they are detected in the early stage, is treated early, whether discovered through periodic health check or symptom-based health check, the result would be the same. One has to take note that although majority of diseases detected on periodic health check will be in the earlier stage, there will be a minority in the later and even an advanced, even advanced stage. The same probability goes for symptom-based early health check. Because of the absence of robust studies, I made a statement. It may be that as long as the detected diseases, assuming they are detected in the earlier stage, is treated early, whether discovered through periodic health check or symptom-based health check, the result would be the same. I made this statement in the back background of robust studies on breast cancer surveillance that serve as an analogy. There are two schools of thoughts on, in breast cancer surveillance. One is using, using a battery of tests even in the absence of symptoms, just like what is done in periodic health check. The other is symptom-based, meaning doing tests based on symptoms or when there, there, there are, when there are already symptoms similar to the concept of symptom-based early health check. Randomized controlled studies have shown that although symptom-based surveillance would detect breast cancer recurrence later, than periodic battery of test surveillance, the final outcome would be the same. The survival rates would be the same for both types of surveillance. An advantage of symptom-based surveillance would be better quality of life because of shorter period, period of anxiety before death. In the RO Hosen pep talk on screening and periodic health check, false positive and false negative results are the downside of this approach. How does the incidence of these false results compared with that in the symptom-based early health check? Again, there are no robust studies on this issue. However, theoretically speaking, the incidence of false positive and false negative assessment in symptom-based health check is expected to be lesser because of the presence of additional data, symptoms, that can be inputted, processed, and correlated in the analysis by the physicians. There are no symptom data to be correlated in the diagnostic test with the diagnos diagnostic test in the periodic health check. So symptom-based health check 
is another approach to promote early diagnosis. What is the symptom-based health check approach that can promote early diagnosis? Let me repeat, symptom-based health early health check approach means that at the onset of the symptom, a physician consults a physician right away for early diagnosis. What is a symptom in the context of physical health? A symptom is a feeling or observation of a person of something unusual in the body, which can be a manifestation of a medical condition or disease. Examples of symptoms are fever, cough, colds, pain, discoloration like redness, lumps, etc. Persons with a medical condition or illness usually experience a symptom or several symptoms. However, there are pe persons with a medical condition who do not manifest symptoms at all. Such persons are labeled as asymptomatic. Symptoms are not equivalent to medical condition or illness per se. They are manifestations of a medical condition or illness. What to do if a person experiences a symptom or several symptoms and when to consult a physician? The first reaction of a person experiencing a symptom or several symptoms is worry. This worry may progress to anxiety if the person does not know what the symptom is indicative of, is not confident of managing, and not confident it will or can be resolved right away. Thus, at the very start of the onset of the symptoms, a person must know what to do to manage the worry. The possession of basic medical knowledge on symptoms would be helpful, such as knowing the organ or system that might be involved and their common disease implications. Examples, fever may indicate an infection is going on. Cough may come from the throat or the lungs, colds from the nose, yellowing of the sclery may usually indicate a liver problem. All persons have the freedom to do self-diagnosis of their symptoms, no matter how crude and tentative it is. At the crudest level, they must know which organ, tissue, or body system is involved. They can go further, even a perception and a guess, what kind of disorder may be present, either inflammatory, infectious, tumorous, growth, hormonal, trauma, etc. They can seek help from the internet. They can ask around even before seeing a physician. Once a symptom or several symptoms occur, wait and watch and monitor closely with the hope that everything will turn out well. The best hope is for the symptoms to disappear spontaneously in due time and soon. The next best hope is for the symptom not to be part of a medical condition called disease. Next for the symptoms, if diagnosed already as a medical disease, to be something curable in due time and soon, and to be able to be treated easily with non-invasive procedures, with short downtime, and with the least expense. Fortunately, majority as high as 90% of symptoms felt at the start are non-specific and will regress or resolve spontaneously even without medical intervention. Again, one has to just wait and watch and monitor with the best hope. One should not panic right away and do irrational intervention. One can be worried, but one should not panic. Just wait and hope for the best. If the symptoms persist and progress, it is time to consult a physician. Two weeks to one month is a generally safe wait and watch period as long as there is no life-threatening condition. Patient can consult sooner if indicated. Patient consulting a physician at this point is what is called symptom-based early health check. What happens at symptom-based early health check? Patients consult a physician. This is a medical consultation, which is defined as a patient or a relative of the patient voluntarily seeking out a physician to get professional advices on certain medical concerns. The physician, as a matter of basic routine, interviews and does physical examination on the patient to get to a clinical diagnosis. 
the physician looks for symptoms together with the signs. Signs are the findings obtained by the physician after doing a physical examination. To make a diagnosis, physicians combine the collected symptom and sign information and see if they can be reflected, reflective of a pattern or picture of a known medical condition or the illness. If they are, then the match medical condition or illness is the diagnosis. With a symptom-based early health check, hopefully the clinical diagnosis made by the physician will end up with an early stage disease or no disease at all. If an early stage disease is diagnosed, this should be followed by early treatment to get good results. A late treatment by the patient for whatever reasons will negate the gain of early diagnosis made by the symptom-based early health check. The symptom-based early health check can still provide an opportunity for early diagnosis if a periodic health check is not done, but the early diagnosis must be followed by early treatment to be completely fruitful or beneficial. There you are, takeaway. Symptom-based early health check is an option available for early diagnosis aside from periodic health check. Symptom-based early health check means that at the onset of symptom, the patient consults a physician right away for early diagnosis so that a discovered disease can be treated early enough to avoid disability and death. Symptom-based early health check also carries an opportunity to catch the disease early. The thing that has to be emphasized also, if an early stage disease is diagnosed, this should be followed by early treatment to get good results. A late treatment by the patient for whatever reasons may negate the gain of early diagnosis made by the symptom-based early health check. So with this, I end my pep talk, staying healthy and contented, early diagnosis and early treatment. I hope I have empowered you, the lay people, to have a better understanding of the use of early diagnosis and early treatment as a strategy in staying healthy and contented. Thank you for your kind attention. Mabuhay kayong lahat.